Hello, you're watching this special edition of Head to Head on UATV. I'm Tom Bell. We're in uh, southeastern Ukraine in uh, Mariupol at the Rethink Invest in Ukraine Forum. So, the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development has invested billions of euros in Ukraine over the past few years to uh, support reforms, stabilize the economy, but also really focus on uh, different industries such as agriculture, energy, and uh, the financial sector, as well as uh, infrastructure as well. Now, here to talk more about uh, the results and opportunities and challenges uh, which lie ahead, I'm pleased that we're joined by Alain Poula. He is the Vice President of Banking at the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development. Hi, Alain. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, today. Uh, what sort of agreements uh, have you signed at the forum? Well, we, we took the opportunity of this uh, interesting uh, forum convened at the initiative of the president of the country to, uh, to show uh, our commitment to the eastern regions of, uh, of Ukraine, where we are, as you know already, uh, very much present. Uh, we finance the metro in Kharkiv, uh, uh, we finance also the metro in uh, Dnipro, we have supported uh, the replacement of trolley buses in uh, many cities. Uh, Dnipro, actually, Kriviri, uh, Mariupol, uh, also uh, more recently uh, Mykolaiv. Uh, we are present in energy efficiency in schools in uh, Dnipro, and now other cities such as Kriviri are, are in. So, so, so these are the projects that you've done up until today. But I mean, no. what, what, what have you announced today? And exactly. ongoing as well, by the way, because, for example, here, in uh, Mariupol now we are working on a new solid waste uh, project, uh, so which is a big problem uh, for, for any, uh, any city. And uh, today we signed a loan to the city of Kherson for the replacement of trolley buses. Uh, uh, again, we are a bit the specialist of the, of the, of the trolley buses. We also signed a, uh, an agreement with the, um, uh, the governor of the Kherson Oblast in order to work on regional roads in the oblast. It's something new because in the past, the oblast could not borrow money. And as you know, there was a law um, some time ago, which now allows the oblast uh, to borrow money and to invest. So we are, uh, we are using that opportunity, which is, uh, which is very good. Uh, um, so these are the, the main things. And also I signed, of course, with the prime minister, a, uh, a memorandum of understanding a uh, rather flexible one, uh, in which focuses on the financing of regional roads all over the country, not only in the eastern regions, all over, all over Ukraine. Uh, now I, I see that you put a lot of emphasis uh, not just on the trolley buses, but on the, uh, the roads and, and general transport network. Um, uh, how do you pick which projects? Because um, I believe in Ukraine uh, you have about 440 or, or so projects at the moment. Um, you must have thousands of uh, applications that you must have to go through. Um, so how do you prioritize them? Is it uh, a, a sort of a, an idea of forecasting what's required or economic benefit? Or but we, are, we are guided at EBRD by very simple principles. Uh, everything we do must have a measurable impact. Uh, so. This is for us, you know, the criterion number one. Uh, another criterion is that we must complement private sector players. So we are not going to compete head on with commercial banks. Why would we? Uh, on the contrary, we want to help develop them. And of course, what we do must be uh, reasonable, bankable. We must recover our, our money, whether we lend money or whether we invest in equity, because we do both, you know. Debt, 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 debt and, and capital. So these are the, the criteria huh, to, uh, to select projects. Then, as you know, we have, uh, at EBRD, we have mainly a private sector focus, mm. but not only. And in particular, in a country like Ukraine, it is essential to develop the infrastructure sector, to develop the energy sector, in order to serve the needs of the private sector. So it all has a knock-on effect, really. Exactly, So uh, because uh, uh, the private sector cannot flourish if uh, the railways you know, uh, are not upgraded, if the, the energy sector is not upgraded. So this is why, for example, this year, 
you could see us invest in the bond issues of Naftogaz in July, and then at the beginning of September, in an additional bond issue by the by the railways, uh, we also lent uh, a lot of money to Ukrainergo uh, this year. So these are in the public sector. I mentioned municipalities as well, but a lot of what we do is in the private sector. It's about 45, 46 percent. You know, it depends on the year, you know, because uh, it depends where we find the impact. So it, it's quite volatile in a, in, in a way. And uh, for the private sector, either we intervene directly when uh, when the company is uh, large enough, or uh, what we like to do is that we have a number of partner banks in uh, Ukraine, and we propose to these banks to lend to them. And uh, in particular, you know, when we can in local currency, and it's very important uh, for for these banks then to lend again our money to the SMEs in the in the country. So we are working with a lot of banks. We are working with, uh, of course, Ukrosip uh, uh, Bank, with uh, with OTP, with uh, Aval, the Savvy of Raiffeisen, but also with a state-owned bank like Ukrexim. Um, also with Pro, Pro Credit, with the Pravex, which is the subsidiary of Intesa uh, here. So we uh, we like to partner with these banks because thanks to them, we can reach you know a much bigger population of SMEs than if we did it by on our own, of course. Yeah, and um, no, we're we're at the forum today in Mariupol, and I think the it's a very strategic location because. Uh, really, in the t Ukraine's two easternmost regions, in the Donetsk and uh, Luhansk oblasts, it's, I think really it's going to be these small and medium-sized businesses, the entrepreneurs, uh, the IT guys, um, who are actually going to drive the economy. Do you, do you agree with that? I agree completely, because it's, uh, uh, you know, in a region which is uh, close to the contact line, uh, the, the ambition you can have is exactly what you say, is to try to uh, foster the development of entrepreneurship of uh, small, medium-sized companies in order to provide jobs. I think it is the most uh, uh, credible uh, way of uh, developing the region. And of course, uh, having in mind that the region needs uh, to have good access. Actually, this morning I drove in a bus from uh, Zaporizhia to, uh, uh, to uh, Mariupol, and yeah. the, the road is good, as you know. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, they but, opened it today, didn't they? But there, there needs probably to, uh, to have improvements in order to also be able to reach Adyessa, you know, on the, on the other side, because uh, this has not been upgraded yet uh, uh, completely. So there are, there are things to do on the infrastructure front in order to help the SMEs of this region uh, flourish. Yeah, and uh, I mean, often we wouldn't think of these projects such as road infrastructure or perhaps some uh, energy sector reforms as important. Often when people hear about them, they think it's some sort of uh, a very broad scheme that it's not, perhaps not very interesting, but actually it does affect them. Of course, yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. It's very, very important. We are, as you know, we are very, uh, very happy this year because uh, uh, for a number of reasons, which I can uh, elaborate upon, uh, mid-October we passed the, the mark of one billion euros of investment in Ukraine. We, we actually we went which is huge, is yeah, it? Yeah, huge. We we went public about it uh, recently. Uh, it will be even more than that by year end, of course. Uh, probably 1.1, 1 1.2 uh, 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 billion. Uh, so it, it's good. Huh? It's uh, twice more than last year. And uh, what is important now for us is to try to uh, continue, you know, to deliver the, the same performance. Uh, what we do, you know, the, the, what is behind it is, uh, of course, uh, growth in Ukraine has resumed. Uh, the macroeconomy is quite uh, stable, uh, uh, so this is helping a lot. But also, as you know, we have a lot of people on the ground. Uh, we have 100 people in Kiev. And they're, and they're involved in interacting with yeah, different yeah. partners. And, and they do the projects, you know, uh, concretely uh, on the ground. And we have also opened uh, for um, the use of SMEs uh, specifically, smaller offices in uh, three locations in Lviv, in Odessa, and in uh, Kharkiv. Actually, the two guys who are in uh, Kharkiv are, are here, you know, I, I, in, the, in, in, in the forum today. So we, we have boots on the ground. This is what uh, makes us quite special uh, among international institutions. We have a lot of people on the ground.
I think what's, um, I mean, apart from that as well, I think it's interesting to look at the regional perspective as well. And you, no. you probably do this from uh, you know, your side. You're not just looking at Ukraine, but the, the broader sort of Eastern European, uh, Central Asian market as well. And actually the, the trend of economic growth in certain parts of Western Europe and Central Asia is uh, forecasted down for this year. But at the same time, Ukraine is going up. So does... I mean, how are your investments in Ukraine? Is there sort of a trend upwards, or how do you forecast that going forward? The, the strategy pursued by the, by the government and the president of the country is quite, uh, is quite good because it's a strategy which consists in uh, liberalizing the economy. Uh, so uh, the law on concessions, the law on privatizations, etc. Uh, opening up the economy and uh, investing in infrastructure. And this, uh, this is bound, you know, to uh, generate additional growth, uh, very, very likely. Uh, will it be the, the 5 to 7% uh, which have been mentioned? I don't know, but uh, it, it can certainly be more than the 2.5 to 3.5, which are the current... Uh, yeah, and, that, and that's the thing, actually. That's, that's what I always find so interesting about the Ukrainian economy, especially in the, the Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast, where we are, because um, it's not because of the, the lack of um, experienced uh, human capital or because of the, the lack of resources. There's still something that's stopping that in investment. So I know you have meetings you know, occasionally with the, the president. Uh, what do you recommend to him if it's, it's no secret? <laughs> it's, uh, it's no secret at all because, uh, actually, I... I said it uh, uh, today in the in the debate in the in the, in the round table. Uh, uh, one, it is very important to maintain the stability, the predictability of uh, economic policies, and the clarity also on this of these policies, because this is what investors look at. Mm. The certainty going forward. Yeah. Investors don't like noise. They don't like uncertainty. So what it means in practice, it means that it is important for the, for the country to have an IMF program. It is important for the country not to take measures which would give the impression that uh, uh, laws are modified, you know, a posteriori, such as in the renewables sector. Uh, so the, the authorities have to be very careful about that. The independence of the central bank has to be preserved uh, as well. This is, uh, this is very important. So everything which can show stability, predictability is good you know, for growth and good for investment. But this is one. Two, of course, the reforms which uh, have been started must continue. And probably now it is time to shift, because quite a lot has been approved by the Rada already, as you know. It is time to shift now a lot to implementation. Because implementation is always more difficult than simply passing a law. Oh, exactly. That's only the first step, really. Uh, it's very <laughs> difficult to translate things into real life. I, I take an example. Uh, concessions is a very important law because this can attack, can attract foreign investment into the country. But for that, you need to uh, open uh, a number of projects for concession. So, uh, as you know, we are working with the IFC on the ports of uh, Herson and Olvia, but we need more than that. Huh? So, uh, and then this will uh, attract investment. So, implementation of the reforms is now the key. Huh? Uh, and it's not easy because the, the administrative capacity of Ukraine is not top, you know, so, and we are trying to help, by the way, with the European Union. Uh, you know, there is this program which we call Reform Support Teams, where we, we finance uh, young, uh, well-educated Ukrainians and we place them in ministries, agencies. Uh, we have more than 200 of them uh, to, uh, to support reform, implementation of reform. And the, 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 the third and maybe most important element of all is that in order to transform Ukraine into a normal country, the two things are extremely important. One, it is the demonopolization of the economy. And this can be achieved in many ways. Privatization is a way of doing it, but also a good competition authority uh, in order to impose competition in certain sectors. This is a medium term effort, you know, you don't do that simply, you know, overnight. Huh? And of course, the second point is to continue to deepen the fight against corruption and the reform of the judiciary. 
for us it is um, you know it's not our area of expertise although as you know we 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 are financing the uh, business ombudsman institution huh? now it is held by a, a polish person uh, martin a very good uh, very good guy but um, uh, we need to see more progress in the judiciary uh, so we are looking you know very carefully at very precise things such as the composition the, of the next uh, qualification commission for judges etc so all this is nitty-gritty but it's very important um, it's a uh, very very important it's fundamental for the country wow so uh, it sounds like you don't have much work on your hands then <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, we have worked for quite a, quite a while. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for this interview. So that was Alain Poulot. He is the Vice President of Banking at the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development. You've been watching a special edition of Head to Head. Stay tuned for more here on UATV.